Hello and welcome to this week's review. This time around I've got a review of a cartridge, a moving magnet cartridge from Goldring. This is the E4 and it costs £199, but if you shop around I think you might be able to find this a bit lower than that. Question is, has it really been five years since I reviewed Goldring's rather startling other moving magnet cartridge? the E3. Well, actually it's been more. It was the end of July 2017 when I posted the review on my website and I love the cartridge to bits you might say. Well, Goldring has now added a bit of extra quality to that E3 design and it has released the E4. Now, the E4 does not replace the E3. The E3 remains as is. The E4, you might say, is the next rung up the ladder. It is, in the E range terms, the flagship design. Well, that's the intention. At any rate, we will see. The E4 itself includes a super elliptical nude diamond stylus that sits at the end of a hollow aluminium cantilever. Hollow, that is, to reduce weight and to increase stylus response around the groove. The idea is to also improve tracking and to lower distortion. Something Goldring calls magnetic duplex technology is also in situ. And this positions two magnets at the same angles as the internally fitted coils. Doing so, the cartridge hopes to improve accuracy and channel separation. Goldring also stated that the higher price for this one has meant that the E4 has been given tweak time, you might say. That is, the company has spent time fine-tuning the E4 before kicking it out of the factory. This piece of news on its own is interesting. Now, the tracking weight for this design is rated between one and a half grams to two and a half grams. So you would immediately choose the median two gram figure, wouldn't you? At least I would. But no, because Goldring recommend that you lean towards the lighter figure of 1.75 grams, which to me, for a budget-ish, cartridge is on the lighter side, I would say. But the intriguing reason is down to the E4 being a bit softer sprung, and this helps to enhance the tracking and the accuracy. Question is though, how does this one sound? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. Welcome to the sound quality tests for the Goldring E4 Moving Magnet Cartridge. And to begin the tests, well, as Serge Gainsbourg's 1975 release Rock Around the Bunker was still on my turntable, I decided to run with that disc for now. This is Gainsbourg's provocative, sometimes savage, I suppose, satire on his traumatic times as a Jewish child in Nazi-occupied France during World War II, and it's presented as a sort of 50s-era pop outing with lounge wrappings. And incidentally, going off on a minor tangent, I'm sure he'd be completely cancelled if he dared to release this LP today. So, thank goodness for the 70s, hey? The first track is called Nazi Rock, and you can see where this is going, can't you, really? And it features Gainsbourg on lead vocal. You've got some female harmony backing, electric guitar, there's bass, there's percussion, tambourine, there's a bit of piano in there, all played wonderfully by the cream of British session men of the time. Unleashed and freaking out in the background, I have to add. It's a bizarre combination for a bizarre and fascinating album. But 
Back to the hardware. First up, I compared the E4 with the rather lower cost Autophon 2M Red. Why did I pick that? Well, it's ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's either pre-fitted or people use it as an upgrade from, say, 30, 40 pound cartridges because the 2M Red is priced at about 100 pounds, 99, 100 pounds, depending where you shop. So, in this case, the E4 being 199, you would think that the 2M Red wouldn't be as good, that the E4 would be superior. But as we know, that's not always the case. Even if the E4 is superior, is it £100 superior? Is it worth spending the extra, in other words? Well, let's go through the list then, shall we? So the E4 design apparently is a low noise design. Is it, especially when compared to the 2M Red? Well, yes, it absolutely is. Lower noise allowed me to increase the gain, actually, on my preamp by a couple of clicks to hit the same volume of the 2M Red, which in itself provided more insight in detailed terms. The frankly superb work from the UK session guys behind Old Surge was easier to pick out now, and all of this information was pushed forward towards the ear. It was also more accurate. Alan Hawkshaw played his piano on this track like Jerry Lee Lewis, with machine gun stabs aplenty, so tracking was essential, as was accuracy. Both were present in spades via the E4. Upper mid and treble detail were also finer and more delicate. For the first time, cymbal hits actually produced impressive reverb. Okay, well let's look at the E4's sister design, the E3. If you have an E3, is it worth upgrading to the E4? Should you bother spending the extra cash? Well, one of the things that hit me with the vocal on the Gainsbourg track was the warming texture of his voice on the E4. His exhausting delivery, pushing out lyric lines without taking a breath, resulted in a roller coaster of French complexity that rolled around the mouth like a Michelin quality dish. That texture was slightly reduced via the E3, lowering the emotion, lowering the nuance, and thus the impact. But you got all of that and more with the E4. Surprisingly, that emotion was also present in the flying electric guitar from Alan Parker. The man channeled Hendrix in this Axeman workout, but the effort was carefully tracked by the E4. The E3 just didn't have the same attention to detail, while bass on the E3 wasn't quite as focused or precise when compared to the E4. The E3 does everything the E4 does, don't get me wrong. It just has less style, less finesse, less substance. The E4 takes the bones of the E3 and it enhances everything. It kind of adds one or two to every feature. Clarity, realism, detail, all went through the roof. Okay, how about a much more expensive design, the Goldring 1042? And at this point, I brought in the Queen High Energy LP Jazz, and I fitted the 1042, which, in my opinion, is arguably the best moving magnet cartridge under £500. Now, you may disagree, of course, and that's fine. Even so, I do rate the 1042 highly. So I wondered how the E4 compared to a cartridge priced around £125 or more. Is the 1042 really an improvement over the E4? Well, yes, actually, it is. The 1042 reaches into the mix, it grabs each instrument, it pulls it forward, it gives each instrument space, it exposes more detail around each instrument, and it combines that lot with a soundstage offering sparkling detail. Like the E3 compared to the E4, the same can be said of the E4 compared to the 1042. The E4 does a superb job. The 1042 adds one or two to all of those E4 highlights. For the price, though, 
the E4 competes really well with the 1042. Now I love the 1042, as I've said, but really, if someone took my 1042 away, I could easily live with an E4. It provides enough high-end highlights in terms of mid-range insight and base focus to put a smile on my face. And that's basically the review of the Goldring E4 Moving Magnet Cartridge. Let me give you a few concluding thoughts. I'll just wrap all this together, pull a ribbon on it, and then I'll give you some pros and cons, and then a rating. I could encapsulate the Goldring E4 into a single sentence. If I was told to pigeonhole it, if I was asked to put it in some kind of sonic box, I would say that the E4 is the perfect poor man's 1042. That is, it sounds head and shoulders above the E3. With the E4, you're getting the first sense of true hi-fi quality. The first notion that there's a whole new level of sound quality out there that real budget cartridges haven't got a hope of touching. The E4, it gives you a slice of that. And while the 1042 is a level above the E4, the E4 isn't that far away. It puts you in touching distance with the 1042. So if your budget doesn't quite stretch as far as the 1042, I would certainly opt for an E4. And what about designs in the same price point? Say the Autophon 2M Blue, for example. Well, the blue is an excellent design. I wholly approve of it. I like it, and I have recommended it on my website and here on this channel. But if you're looking at a head-to-head -head shootout, the E4, it does sound more mature in comparison. That is, the E4 is well-rounded and tonally better balanced, I would say, compared to the blues rather direct and right between the eyes approach. Put it this way, if the E4 was an amplifier, I would compare it favorably with the Audiolab 6000A. It's in that kind of tonal balance range. So bottom line is this. The E4 punches above its weight. It's a cracking design, easily recommended. And to me, the E4 is everything a budget cartridge should be. Pros and cons. And in the good section, we've got mid-range detail. Lots of it, I lapped it all up, couldn't get enough of it. Tonal balance, well, that really separates the men from the boys in this price point. And the E4 has excellent tonal balance. Clarity, well, that was a big plus point. I could hear those delicate cymbals. I could hear the piano very easily indeed. Bass, well, that was balanced and full and focused. In the bad section, well, nothing of any import, I would say, nothing important. And that's why I'm going to give this particular cartridge a 9 out of 10 and a deeply groovy congratulations to Goldring. And that's it folks, thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And before you go, can I ask you down below if you could click on the like and subscribe buttons, it just helps this channel to progress in a YouTube frame of mind. And down there, I'll put a link to Goldring. Also, there's my links to my Facebook group, which you're welcome to join my website which if you don't know already has been redesigned. It's a brand new website, so check that out. Also, there's a brand new Hi-Fi News Etc. on my Patreon page. Also other exclusive stuff over there too. And I will be back on Friday with another Music Alerts video. And in there, I will tell you what physical product, musical physical product I've received in the post that week. And I'll show you what I've got. Anyway, hope to have your company in that video. Until then folks, bye bye for now.